Hi, everybody. Welcome to my talk on Third Room, <laughs> which is um, a project, tiny project done by three people, uh, Robert, Nate, and AJ. Um, AJ also famous for doing Cine um, as a Matrix client, uh, which is trying to show people that Matrix is way more than chat and VoIP. I know that it's cool to look at 3D stuff these days and go, I don't like 3D. But honestly, I think this is incredibly interesting in showing the potential of what we have to build on top of Matrix today. Now, the way it works is that you've got Hydrogen SDK going and basically providing a plain old Matrix client. And um, if I jump into this room here, which is hash presentation on thirdroom.io, if people want to um, play along at home, feel free to come and jump in and heckle my presentation. And you can see that this is a virtual world going and sitting in browser. Um, if I pull up the frame rate, which is obviously control shift S, you can see it's actually going at 60 frames a second. Amandine, you're stuck in the floor. <laughs> um, it's running at 60 frames a second um, in browser at, well, 1080p, as we all just saw, which is pretty impressive um, for a fairly complicated scene that we have um, going on here. And the way that Third Room works is quite um, unusual in that it's properly multi-threaded um, in browser. Um, it's using an entirely new game engine that uh, the team basically put together. And I should hasten to add, I've basically been encouraging people rather than actually working on this, um, but Robert's in um, San Fran, and so it'll be cruel and unusual to get him to do this um, talk. Um, and um, I've even got some slides here, and it's showing the scripting that is built in that I'll talk about uh, in a minute. Now, the interesting thing is that we're using shared array buffers to go and share data between the main thread and a bunch of worker threads using post message between these and then the Atomics APIs in the browser so that you can actually have probable multiple threads in order to have the rendering thread running completely independently from the gaming thread that does physics and the main thread that does React and does hydrogen because we've embedded hydrogen in the React app here as well as Matrix. So, if I go um, to the next slide. Here are, the, so on the main thread, we've got React, Matrix, and WebRTC um, happening. And we have spatial audio in here. So if I actually That's unmute myself. Oh, I've got, first of all, myself on my own talk. That's annoying. Let me <laughs> pause that. Amandine, are you still out there somewhere? You want to come over and say something to me? Is anybody else? I'll go over to you, say something. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So if we had headphones on at this point, and I turn this way and you say something. It's coming out the left speaker, and you have to believe me, <laughs> and look the other way, and it's coming out. Honestly, it helps the immersive experience massively that we're going and using spatial audio to go and position where things are here. Um, whilst we're wandering around here, you can see that we've got, at the moment, generic avatars. Um, but if you walk around a bit, you can see her moon walking backwards for whatever reason. I'm sure you can also go forwards. There we go. And fly, for that matter. Ooh. And... Um, um, so the B button lets you fly in this, so you can go and jump around like so. Um, and um, so, oh, you're spoiling my talk. <laughs> so if we go down here, then on the game thread, we've got um, a bunch of Rust. We have the ability to run arbitrary WebAssembly scripts, which is sitting in a sandbox, which allows you to basically add any arbitrary functionality into the world. From a pure matrix perspective, this is probably the most exciting thing here. Now, if you remember... IRC and Merck scripting and the ability to run arbitrary scripts on your IRC client. This is effectively allowing you to define bots and arbitrary functionality and matrix which run inside your client, inside the sandbox, and the actual data is stored in your room. Now, this whole thing is a matrix room. Right? If I go and hit um, uh, enter, then well, you can see a bunch of users there. I can say, hello world. And if I go back to my element client, and if I literally join presentation on thirdroom.io for matrix.org, then I can, you can see I'm doing saying here, and I can say here to you too, and um, hopefully, uh, hello? Well, I've got traffic running one way. Interesting. Well, we should be seeing um, messages coming into the room um, as well, because it is, oh, there we go. It's just a um, plain old hydrogen overlay um, that is being rented in React for the contents of the room. Now, the 
um, actual geometry of the room, if we start flying around some more, um, looks like this. It's actually a big GLTF uh, or a single GLTF asset. This thing is just sitting in the media repository in the room. It's just a file that is GLTF, the transfer format for OpenGL, that has been uploaded there. And also any scripts in the room, like the one which is executing the... Um, uh, uh, wait, let me press on the buttons here. Again, it's a bit of, I think, JavaScript using the QuickJS um, engine that has gone and compiled down the JavaScript to WebAssembly in real time. It's pretty cool that you literally write it in JavaScript and then the engine sucks it up, turns it into WASM and runs it within that sandbox. So you could argue it's a little bit perverse to be taking JavaScript, compiling it to WebAssembly and then running it from within a JavaScript environment. But it gives you a hell of a lot more safety um, than you would if we were just, I don't know, having random blobs of JavaScript running here. Um, on the render thread, we are using WebGL2, and we're using 3.js to manage the actual um, driving of WebGL. But the scene itself is, <laughs> the scene itself is um, uh, managed using a really cool technology called BitECS that was actually created by Nate, um, one of the developers, before he started working on, uh, they, before they started working on Third Room. And um, BitECS is an um, entity component system where you basically track the state of the world, the objects that exist within it, their transformations, and it's done with um, arrays in JavaScript. And it turns out that if you stretch your arrays intelligently enough in JavaScript, you can get as good as WebAssembly performance. And it's one of the other secrets to the crazy um, performance that we have here. So this isn't um, an, a scene graph API under the hood, like A-Frame, if anybody ever played with A-Frame. Instead, it's using um, the, the bit ECS. Then um, uh, another thing which is interesting here is that everything is um, triple buffered. So in a kind of traditional game engine, you just have one sort of um, buffer that you write data into and the renderer reads it out, and you have some kind of locking system to make sure that it doesn't collide. Whereas here, we have lot three data structures, letting things go as rapidly as possible with the various different bits of the engine writing into the shared, uh, the shared triple buffer as a shared array um, buffer, which is then um, juggled effectively between the various different threads. And it means that the render thread can run at the native speed of whatever device, which is particularly useful if it's um, a less powered device than my MacBook Pro here, um, and then the game engine that is actually rendering what's going on can go at its own speed. So you totally decouple the two and you get as high a frame rate as you can. And I think that, oh yeah, and finally, lots of fun stuff going on with an uh, asset optimization pipeline. Um, uh, particularly the textures have been highly compressed using these fun codecs, I think it's called Universal Basis um, Format from Binomial and KTX. And one of the things we've done to cheat to bootstrap um, Third Room is to build a pipeline from Unity where you can take existing Unity assets, like this scene here is one that we bought off the Unity asset store, and then export it as proper um, open standardized JLTF, somewhat liberating the contents from the slightly proprietary world of Unity um, in order to get content in more rapidly and then compress it down. And um, there are lots of fun things like the... Uh, it has instancing support built in, so if you start generating lots of objects, like the physics engine here, I know, go and create a whole bunch of objects and attack the various people who are wandering around in here. I'm sure they love me for it. Um, then this is basically just the same GLTF um, asset. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Um, uh, going and... Um, uh, uh, being created multiple times. All the textures are sprited, so there's just one great big thing. Um, there's also some really interesting extensions to um, uh, GL um, that we've um, contributed by the Kronos group. Um, particularly, if you look at, if we grab one of these um, mirror balls, which are mainly uh, uh, used for debugging purposes, let's grab that one. And if I run around with it, or I fly around with it, you should see that the reflection changes, there we go, like if I go between zones there, it's not, it needs to be tuned a bit, but basically rather than ray tracing, which would be incredibly um, time consuming, instead we have lots of different probes hanging around the scene that allow you to, so I'm hitting myself in the face with the ball, 
a common problem, um, that um, uh, as you run around, um, you, you can see the reflection changes. It's pretty nasty if you do it rapidly, but if you're doing it more slowly like this, then it's a, a, a quite a subtle but nice effect. And it's even better when it's on not perfect mirror balls. Um, if you look at, say, Dave, if you walk backwards, if you can hear me, or go into the light or out of the light, then you actually see a fairly subtle shadowing effect as it's gone and figured out where the shadows are there. Right, God, it's cool to see all the people running around in here. So, uh, what else can I show you? One of the, so we're going to launch um, Tech Preview 2 uh, this next week, and this is the first time anybody has seen Tech Preview 2, and I have 10 minutes yet left, Jan. And um, Tech Preview 1 is sort of what we've been looking at here, except it didn't have scripting. We've already shown some of the scripting here, but one of the big things that have been added, and let's pray that this thing works, um, is um, WebVR. So hopefully, if I uh, go um, to the Oculus streaming thing, which I had a second ago, I should have possibly cleaned this up first. Arr, of course, it stopped working. Um, whilst I get this thing back in again, and uh, everything is going wrong, apparently I've got to recalibrate the entire thing. Um, so I apologize, uh, apologize for using proprietary technology, but unfortunately there aren't any open source um, uh, headsets which do the trick yet. Um, there we go. And let me try to cast this up. And unfortunately, it takes ages for the screen casting to kick in for some reason. Uh, but I'll go as quick as I can. Uh, bump. And cast. And computer. Go. Right. Um, so WebXR is a really cool technology. It's been there for ages now, since about 2017, built into um, browsers like um, uh, Firefox and Chrome, obviously, and also, interestingly, the browser that your Oculus um, Quest like this or Quest Pro um, has built into it, which is based on Chromium. Um, it has awful screencasting support, as you can see, and that I started at screencasting, and something is happening in the depths of Facebook trying to figure out um, how to actually get this onto the screen here, but hopefully it will come through. Assuming I've got internet connectivity, here it is, thank God, and I can start talking. And I apologize for, I'm going to focus on, oh, oh, interesting. So I'm going to focus on Florian rather than embarrassing everybody else. Um, but let's just use a stationary boundary, confirm. Right, so the browser here sits there. I'm not going to update this right now. But here is um, third room. And if I continue into third room as guests, you can see this is just a static, um, uh, boring old web browser just sitting here. Worth noting that Third Room uses OIDC um, entirely. So this thing here is actually a skinned um, um, key cloak. I'm going to say I'm not a bot. I'm not going to bother giving myself a name. And then capture failed. Brilliant. Thanks, Google. Uh, I'm going to have to type in Third Room, except caffeine and stress means my ability to use a stupid keyboard like this is going to be fun. OK, back to Third Room here. Is the streaming OK? Yeah. OK, brilliant. Let's go to login. Go back to third room. Continue as guest. Um, this time, hope that it's not going to make me pick stupid things. Right, good. Continue. Accept the T's and C's. Honestly, the, uh, using um, a key cloak for this is really, really fun. And very anticlimactically, we end up with, eventually, modular connectivity, a um, 2D version of Third Room just sitting right here. <laughs> so isn't it amazing? By the way, that just loaded from um, IndexedDB local storage. But the fun thing is hopefully, come on, you can do it. You can see it's actually struggling quite a lot um, in this. But if I press the Alt X button there, perhaps I have to close the Welcome to Third Room dialog. Here it is. Come on. Enter XR. Oh, thank God for that. Then I can see Florian. Hello, Florian. <laughs> but more excitingly, hopefully, if I stay in the right place, there we go. You can see that I'm actually in the third room um, environment right now. And this is genuinely cool. Uh, this is running at 90 frames a second for me um, right now. And if I go and press some buttons to create some, oh, God, ow. <laughs> 
um, some uh, crates, like that massive crate. Let me get rid of that. You can see it's actually hooked up to the normal physics engine, so I can go and pull that, and I can confusingly throw it into the audience, which is in no way surreal to be going and flipping back and forth, and um, then back in the normal world again. Um, at the moment, um, uh, we've just got basic things like um, the joystick um, hung up, um, hooked up to it. Um, it's got a kinematic controller, um, and am I running out of... Oh, no, thank you, Flory. Um, <laughs> uh, um, what else can I show you? We can jump, we can spawn more objects, um, I can go after that glitter globe and... Um, uh, oh, sorry, mirror ball, except it's running faster than I can run after it. That's awkward. Um, and theoretically, if I was a little bit closer to the bloody thing, I'd be able to grab it and pick it up, um, etc. So this is pretty cool, honestly. It's as good as the native non-web VR um, closed stuff that Facebook or Meta Horizons does. Um, and the entire thing is open and um, you know, built on the third room engine. How am I doing for time? Three minutes, in which case I will very quickly um, go and... Sorry, thanks, Murray. Um, I will um, start looking at random MSCs, go back into this, and just look at some other things we've done. In fact, this one is really cool. Let's just flip into this one, because this is a really complicated bit of WASM. It's actually an audio reactive widget, um, which is sitting here. As you can see, as I yell at it, it goes and changes size. And this is a whole bunch of C code that has been compiled down to WASM to show how you can have interactive things sitting inside the scene. Um, another example is slightly less excitingly a chatbot um, echo service. So if I go into here and say uh, hello and then do echo hello with a slash command, it says hello back to me. Now the echo that's happening down there is actually being done from the widget API of Matrix going into WebAssembly, um, talking to I think a JavaScript service. Um, and then um, echoes back. And you can see we have a slight bug sometimes with scripting where it loads two worlds at the same time, and that's pretty surreal. <laughs> um, that's what happens if London got combined with Mars. Um, final thing here, uh, blah, 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 what was I going to show you? Oh, yeah, um, is uh, this guy, which is a bit silly, but fun anyway. And this time I'll remember to refresh as fun as it is to have the scenes combined. So you might recognize this from a certain film. And um, if we actually look at the script for this um, particular room, if I can figure out how to get out of full screen mode, the script um, here is, again, just sitting in the media repository. It's a little bit of JavaScript um, to use the Web Scene Graph API, which is a new API that we've created. We hope it will become a W3 standard for manipulating scene graphs. It looks a lot like DOM. You basically get a node by name, the TV, and then every frame you'd see if the TV is being pressed, and if it is, then you enable the matrix material. And the end result is, if I go here, and I click on the TV, then, predictably enough, you end up in a matrix-style world. And I've got it in third-person view, which is also new with TechPreview Preview 2, and click back and forth. This is super early, but you can imagine this is basically a platform for doing any kind of real-time collaborative app. It could be Figma on this, it could be multiplayer Blender, it could be a game, it could be digital twins. It could be, I don't know, smart cities, GIS applications. It's as powerful and as flexible as the web, but for real time. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we have no time for questions. Time for one question. Is there one question? Oh. Uh, it will be coming in the next release after Tech Preview 2. Um, I mean, the hard bit of actually rigging up the engine and doing all the inverse kinematics, and if you run around with the current avatars, you can now trip over things, which is very important. Um, but um, suffice to say, we're focusing on the engine rather than the assets. And also, this is at a point where people can start contributing things. So if you've got amazing uh, assets, if they support the Mixamo um, rig, then they should just drop straight in. Cool.